Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to Limassol. So my name is Maris Sakidis. I'm a hacktivist. So my practice is technology, mechanisms, and policies. And I would like to present two of them here today. And it's actually a, an honor to be presenting both with NIM and uh, with Manilab, but without slides. Um, the first mechanism has to do with uh, what Yanis uh, has already mentioned, the uh, kind of reclaiming the blockchain space as a union of builders, as a union of people who develop smart contracts. And the second concept has to do with uh, what I've seen you being very disappointed about, NFTs. And the idea has to do with uh, commodifying NFT utilities. Uh, okay, so starting with the biggest scam of all, uh, Ethereum, um, which is... Okay, yeah, so it, what my main disagreement has to do uh, with is um, the initial coin offering and how the Ethereum currency, the ETH token, has actually been distributed and uh, is controlled nowadays by just a few of uh, key players, primarily uh, VC funds and other um, people who already had big capital in the traditional fiat currencies. Um, so Ethereum started as an ICO uh, and if you could uh, guess how much of the tokens that were sold pre-mined in the initial coin offering of Ethereum compared to the total amount in circulation nowadays. Uh, so the, ori the original pre-mined tokens would be about 50% of the total amount uh, of Ethereum in circulation nowadays. And the concept of proof of work was that everybody should be kind of, it's an, it's an open participation protocol. So it means that everybody should be able to run the client on their computer. And instead of running a heater, for example, they would be mining um, Ethereum tokens. That was Satoshi's original dream about proof of work uh, based on what he has mentioned, what, what he calls like the open market. Um, the situation nowadays, of course, we know that proof of work uh, didn't end up being very democratic as uh, Satoshi was uh, imagining because eventually um, due to the ASICs miners that were specialized in pr processing the proof of work puzzle very fast, uh, it was impossible anymore for individuals to mine Bitcoin on their laptops um, and Ethereum took it a step even further away with uh, the proof of stake. Uh, basically consensus protocol uh, where of course we don't have to burn electricity anymore uh, to participate in the consensus and elect a leader who is going to present a new block. Uh, instead uh, the incentive here or like the, the mechanism design has to do around uh, staking Ethereum tokens so that you uh, get a vote uh, and like staking, let's say, one Ethereum token would give you one vote into the consensus protocol. Um, but you see how um, basically how problematic it is that 50% of the in initial coin uh, holders are actually uh, have all this power nowadays in, uh, in Ethereum with proof of stake. And this power means that they exclusively benefit from minting new tokens, uh, getting fees for all of the transactions that take place on the Ethereum, uh, the Ethereum blockchain. And finally, uh, yeah, and also deciding on how the protocol is gonna move forward. And, and having such power on uh, the currency, on the token of the blockchain, it means having so much power on every application built on top of it. Because Ethereum serves as kind of the, um, the common denominator, if you would like, or the way of transferring value from one uh, smart contract to another on Ethereum. Um, and this is not something that serves neither the people who are using, who transact on top of blockchain, on top of Ethereum, but neither nor the uh, developers who are building applications for these people, basically. Applications that have to do, for instance, with our commons. So I suggest uh, that we actually build a union of uh, smart contract developers and we reclaim the blockchain space so that everybody can transact in equal terms. Um, the implementation 
is very simple. And you can see it right here. Um, I'm going to make it a, yeah. I call this, like, the concept is that it could be, for example, a, a DAO of, uh, of builders. Uh, uh, but it can be any type of oracle that can give you uh, a specific value. Let me, explain, let me explain how it works. So uh, the Ethereum block space where we write transactions is of a specific size. So only a few of the transactions can make it into the block space. Um, therefore, the traditional design, mostly in, in Bitcoin, started start with Bitcoin, is that people can select an additional priority fee so that they can get the transactions included versus other transactions that are uh, pending to get included um, into, the, into the blockchain. Uh, of course, we see the power again of the stakeholders, in this case, the plutocrats, if you would like, to decide on, uh, for instance, which type of transactions to include, uh, and also whether to set up a minimum priority fee that they will benefit from, in a very similar way as it would be a taxation fee. Um, that, um, for transacting in this uh, blockchain medium. Um, so think of it, for, for example, as the stakeholders being the landlords, um, the block space being the available flats, for example, in the city, and then the users being the potential residents. Uh, and you can understand pretty much uh, the analogy of what we're trying to do here. Uh, and we, you, we unionize, we, um, we involve the builders who create the smart contract applications to include um, a simple rule into their smart contracts that you can see right here. We require that the priority fee of the transaction uh, selected by the residents, selected by the people who transact, to be less than what we consider to be fair. So the builders DAO, the builders union decides on a specific rate that uh, we consider to be uh, fair uh, so that everybody can participate based on, on their capacities. Um, and if the transaction fee, if the priority fee actually goes beyond that, then we go on strike, on a digital strike, and the smart contracts stop executing. Um, and yeah, the implementation is as simple as this line of code that you see here. Um, we release this as a library that smart contract developers can include in their smart contracts and as a, as a modifier. So every time a function is called that is using this modifier, if the priority fee goes beyond what we deem to be fair, we go on a strike and the smart contracts stop executing. Um, I think, okay, and this is called the low pass filter because it only allows uh, transactions with a pri that have up to a max priority fee to go through. Um, as a continuation to the state resistance artwork, I presented at NIM a few years ago. Um, what else? Okay, so there are a few things that are also interesting beyond... Um, so yeah, what, there, there are a few interesting outcomes with this rule. Um, one has to do with, uh, first of all, we reduce, of course, the, the control of the stakeholders. Uh, and we do that all together as a union now, as a smart contract developers union. It's not, so they cannot ban one of the developers anymore. But, uh, and, but it, can also, it also allows for us to democratize um, our, um, our smart contracts. So for example, if you have built a decentralized a DeFi uh, smart contract by including this rule, you are also making it more uh, open for everyone to participate uh, without having to go through the high priority uh, highway. But just by saying that this is the maximum um, priority fee that my users can pay, then you allow more people to be able to participate, for example, in uh, this DeFi protocol. I didn't explain it very well. Um, the concept is that it's not only about reclaiming the space on the blockchain against the, the, the stakeholders, it's also democratizing who can uh, transact on our DeFi protocol, on, on our smart contracts. So we give more opportunities to people uh, who might not have 
enough tokens to compete with the rest of the things going on on the blockchain. Another thing has to do with uh, account abstraction, where um, when you can delegate, uh, uh, when you can pay fees um, from uh, one smart contract by another smart contract, then you can use uh, this uh, priority fee uh, settlement as an oracle about uh, what is the maximum price to be given so that people do not uh, basically draw your contracts that you use for uh, delegate payments. Um, yeah, 